platform. Prototyping levels repeat classifier segment using certain um, attributes to it. Let's say it all depends upon what you prioritize okay, at that particular moment of time. For example, that the example product that we are talking about urine collection bag, if we have to do it, okay, if you're doing it, what we have prioritized, these are all the um, exhaustive, which we could think upon, but there are a lot of other factors that can affect prototyping levels and then deciding on how do we attain prototype, prototype one, prototype two. Now, if you have to do that urine collection bag, what we have uh, prioritized to certain factors in uh, constraints. So what we, what we did is, okay, so now prototype one, what we'll achieve is uh, the functionality. Okay, the features, what I meant is features or the novelty. Are these two met prototype one? Yeah, check. Because if you're focusing on ID design elements at the first stage, probably you may have to go back and retread on the features functionality on the main principle. So we don't want to do that. So our priority is USP or the features. So we have prioritized on in prototype one, prototype two. So it all depends upon what you're prioritizing. Let's say you have a capital infusion problem. Let's say if client says, Krishna, I have only uh, you know, one lakh rupee for development of this product, okay, for prototype. Now we're gonna think on lean, lean way of doing a prototyping, right? We wanna, we don't invest a lot in, uh, you know, getting a custom PCB design probably. I'll talk about the technology in a while. Take available resources and then create a prototype, right? It still solves the issue, but then compromising on certain levels, okay. Now, if he says the budget is of one lakh, okay, for creating a Euro pouch, okay, now, he may not put that prototype to testing facility, test testing. You're getting it, right? He may not put that prototype to testing, but then testing, when I say testing, it's for regulatory. Probably he cannot put it for regulatory, yet it solves issues and features and functionalities, all that done. Because, so you need to prioritize what is that you wanted to do? Is that a problem with the capital infusion? Are you compromising certain features? Let's say in urine collection bag, one of the features is to create a softer, softer filter between the skin and the skin as a barrier between the product and the skin of the user. The softer feature that is a value addition to the product, but then it's not a core feature. So we compromised on that. So that is one uh, no feature compromising. And then USB novelty, yet you're dealing with this is like a mandatory thing. You novelty, you have to deal with the novelty. There's no, uh, there is no. Type of market and competition. For example, urine collection bag is one of the types of market in medical industry. Without your product also, people are dealing with it. Okay, it's okay. So people are dealing with it. nothing is stopping. So they could continue doing it, but then you got a liberty over time. Certain liberty over the time. It also depends on uh, uh, the number of parameters that depends upon. But type of market you need to see. Let's say if there is a consumer electronic, uh, you're creating a laptop, okay, or a mobile phone. Since very competitive, people are getting very sophisticated. Now, now that we're talking about these mobile phones with a uh, high uh, RAM facility, RAM or uh, cap computational capabilities, there is a mobile phone with a different concept where you can foldable uh, displays, right? It's very competitive. You cannot wait for it. Time is not a liberty there. You gonna infuse so much of capital you know, into the product that you're thinking upon to build in a laptop. So you need to decide what type of market are you dealing with it. So you, it's it's all about to deal or a fiddle with the the parameters that uh, in priority <clears throat> and the context. Um, earlier session, I also emphasized on contextual awareness of the product is what really important. Now you need to know. Uh, you need to know what context are you dealing. You know, uh, for example. Euro collection bag also, the context is that uh, enhancing the experience, right? Of the main intent of the product is to enhance the, giving a better experience of using a Euro urine collection bag. Okay, that's the context of the product. Uh, for example, certain context of the product is to give, there should be a hurry. So okay, hurry for the product. I also talked about it. Fine, but accessibility to resources. This is also important thing that need to uh, put in prototyping categories, prototype one or two, three. You have all the A, B, C, D, E of uh, constraints, but then there is no technology to do it. I have, if he says, Krishna, I have 20 lakhs to develop this product. Okay, I, so he has capital infusion. Okay. But then if you have to create a technology, I mean, if there is a, you know, uh, 
level of the development, the advancement of a technology in particular prototype development isn't there. So we need to hold back and then see what are alternatives do we have to create a prototype. So that's also there. I mean, you have, it's not entirely about the capital, but also it's about upon uh, technology, the availability for faster building a prototype. Time to market uh, is also talked about, depends upon competition. Team technical competences. You're also segmenting the prototype levels based on the team competences. Let's say all of us are there in in in, in DQ. Uh, team is quite uh, competent in creating the technology, user interfaces, website, or uh, you know IoT integration firmware, all that. But what if there is no virtual reality? Probably if if virtual reality is needed at all, okay. You need to see see what uh, the team competences and then create a prototyping levels. Until prototype one, okay, you cannot create everything apart from virtual reality tool, uh, the the software or the virtual VR, and then create that USB little pin prototype too by getting another stakeholder, right? That's what you need to segment. You can, you know, you can also segment the prototyping based on the technical competences of the team. The whole point is how effectively are we building a prototype with the availability of resources, availability of car, and when I say resources, is also to deal with the team. Let's say if I'm alone, uh, to what level, to the what max level that I could build a prototype that can reflect most of the attributes of a product. That's what I think of, okay. Now, after building the prototype one, then what all things left, I would seek help about it. Otherwise, until then I'll hold back and then see what I could do it or what are the team, what the team could do it. That's how you segment the prototyping levels also, okay. Of course, complexity of the segment is also team capability. And then feasibility. Now, what if we say, we build the POC prototype and everything is done, okay. Now, what if the particular um, product takes three to four months in creating a mold for a developing into a product, okay. For example, that if that is a constraint, what you do is you go back to the prototyping in uh, medium only prototyping and then see what could, what could better compensate for next three months of a pilot study. Now, you're going to infuse a little more capital in making the product slightly better, not on par with the product level where you are investing on the uh, uh, mold, right? So you hold back to the product and then say, okay, now I'm gonna invest and then create a better product. So this is also one of the constraints, time to market manufacturing, feasibility, uh, technical and design elements. So these are certain uh, parameters that you could take consideration while you're prototyping. Prototype one, prototype two, prototype three, how advanced are the prototypes? Now you could say, I'm gonna develop only alpha level of prototype, one prototype, and then directly switch to product. That's also possible based on certain parameters, accessibility, right? That's prototype levels. That entirely depends upon product and, and these parameters, what level of prototyping that you're doing. So that's there. Hmm. This is one more uh, the picture that you're saying. In one of the products that we're dealing, what we typically do is the session one and two of design thinking and conceptualization. After having all the resources availability with me, with us, put it on put it on the board and then see what are we doing it. As I was saying, there are three elements: hardware, um, hardware, firmware, and then uh, firmware. When I mean firmware, it's a software. Hardware, software, and three design elements. These three broadly classify of a product design development. For a particular product, these three are the things that we may have to deal with. So what I will do is what the team does is put everything on board and then see, if you see this one is a design explorations, okay, in terms of uh, enclosures of the product. And this is a flow of the product, the usage, right? From beginning that we have created a certain flow quickly prototyping it. It doesn't take much in prototyping, right? In creating a flow chart. Uh, so this is prototyping. These are the prototyping uh, techniques and tools methods, right? You see, there you're gonna see sketches, styling, sketching, okay. And then flow of the whole procedure of using a particular product. If I, if a particular product has a software application and a, and a tangible product, for example, this is a instrument and this is a phone. If a particular product, you know, mandates to use a mobile phone and a, and a product also, you see how easy in tracking which which instrument is it dealing with the first one the first is the product is it, is it going to come on yes if the product if that is a product how do you uh, 
uh, intuitively uh, give a sign to the person to use mobile phone also. The next step is to use a mobile phone. How do you create it intuitively? That's what flowchart is. You're gonna create flowchart and see how intuitively he goes to the flowchart. And then there is a mockup. You see, there is a software mockup uh, application, mobile application, the, the screens of mobile are there. Software app is also done. Now mockup, when I say a prototyping mockup, a software app, design, software app, and then enclosure. If I have to deal with the enclosure, what form signifies what, we kind of extensively study on form factors also, how effective is the form. This is one of the form factor. This is one of the mock-up. Okay, you see there's a structure, right? The mock-up, you do it with a thermocol. As I was explaining earlier, the faster way of visualizing a product is to use a most abundant resource, which is thermocol at a disposable price. That's what we did. You gonna study the form factors using it. Now, if you ask me if there is a capital, nice capital for the product, you can also prototype the same with uh, CAD modeling or 3D printing. Now, at the initial level, until unless we explore this kind of forms, there is no liberty. You're getting it right. If, there, if you're using CAD model, you won't have a natural liberty over exploring the features and possibilities. That's why we're going to prefer this. Let me talk about these things. As I was mentioning, there are certain design uh, resources available over the internet. CAD modeling, if you're okay, now. The third point of building faster product is once this is done, now we know features and functionalities, you go to the second level of prototyping, which is CAD modeling, download the uh, online uh, resources which are readily available at, uh, you know, at, at negligible price or free, which is one of the sources that we typically prefer is GrabCAD. Okay. And if you want to design inspirations, now after uh, you know, one and two sessions, whether we have seen design thinking and conceptualization, now you are not See, at the beginning itself, you're not exploring these possibilities. At the prototype level, only you're checking uh, availability of resources because anything that is there, which is already developed and we don't want to get into it because it's it's monotonous, right? It's only when you are creating a prototype, you get uh, these kind of inspirations or the models to see, visualize. Design inspiration, Behance is one beautiful uh, platform to for you to explore the design inspirations. Hmm. And for hardware, as I was explaining, in Euro, Euro approach, if the client says, okay, well, limited number of resources, limited number of uh, capital, and then we're going to say, okay, so let's not invest much on uh, custom PCB designing and then hold back to say, uh, let's take ready-made available module, which is a microcontroller. You know, fortunately, you get uh, ample microcontrollers in different shapes and sizes based on your requirement, which is readily available. You need not you know, uh, start from scratch in creating the, you know, the, the schematic and then creating a PCB Gerber and releasing it and kind of manufacturing it. All that is, I mean, it's worthless. I mean, worthless. Uh, so you're gonna go check what available microcontrollers available available in uh, adequate size and shape. So it's it's already there. Microcontrollers, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, they're all doing it. Uh, sensors input output and sensors. You're gonna check what sensors are already available, and then you're gonna quickly grab and see prototyping in prototyping. Okay, so now you have this uh, fundamental things, building blocks of a prototype of uh, when you talk about hardware, microcontrollers are available, sensors are available. Now, what what do we do with it? Like, should you program? You need to program it, right? So firmware integration is so what you do is like you're gonna go explore this open forums and platforms to create a quicker prototyping. If you want a quicker prototyping, add a little bit features. Let's say your intention, okay, for example, this Euroware pouch, the volumetric indication of a pouch. Now you have a microcontroller which decides upon when there is a volume uh, turning and then giving an alarm. Okay, this, there is a sensor input, okay, using which you are capturing whether the volume has uh, attained. And to output, how are you informing the person that the volume is attained? Input, output, and the process controller. So these three are resources. Now you wanna see over the online and then check, are there any other uh, closer applications or metaphorical applications? Let's say this is a, this, the application is medical, right? But there could be a similar technology available for alternative purposes. That's what you wanna explore and then see if there is open source and integrate it for a faster prototyping, a bits and model integration. Okay. That's about firmware, uh, hardware and the software applications also. For you to better visualize of any software app, mobile applications, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter to 
um, quickly go and develop an application on React Native or whatever it is, you can visualize that uh, mobile application flow using uh, you know, very intuitive apps for the internet availability. There is a, if you want to check the flow flow diagrams, create a flow diagram that you can easily do it flow creator on the piece of paper. That's one level of mockup, okay? And then user interactions. What happens clicking on a button? What happens clicking on second button? That's already available for the Intuit applications. Adobe XD is a wonderful product, wonderful platform for uh, exploring the prototyping of a software application. Similarly, Mockplus, Blastmic, and Fluid UI. These are all the applications which are there for you to explore um, this uh, prototyping for uh, software apps. Infographics, okay. Now, any product that you take, you know, you need to create a better, better visualization of our infographics. That it is to deal with the data. How you are informing the informing the you know data with the better graphics visualization. That also you could quickly check using existing platforms. And then creating a mockup. Uh, if you recall the picture that I've shown, creating a mockup is uh, the mobile phone slides the pictures of uh, tiles of a mobile phone that I've shown. In the software, what I was talking about is a mockup. Okay, the C, uh, this is a mockups of a mobile phone. And then this one is a interaction, in a user interaction. What happens clicking on it? What is the information? How do you info, infographics, right? Infographics is how you're visualizing the data using bubbles and the color labels. And all this is called user interactions. What happens clicking on a button, second button, third button? Okay, what, what from where it leads to the other part, other uh, feature? All that is visualized in a prototype. So if you look at it, until this point, we have not ventured into technical uh, execution, right? But yet we have gotten a lot of clarity over the product. Okay, now if this is given, people can easily develop or execute it. That's the thing, that's the beauty. That's the level that you want to, I mean, somebody should be attaining using prototyping tools, techniques, which are easily accessible, intuitive, and doable immediately. So that's about software apps and then design, design also available. So these three fundamentals of enclosure designs, mechanism design, and then hardware and software. So these three are sophisticated uh, now tools and techniques for a particular products earlier. If you're talking about a water bottle and non-technical, then you could easily deal with uh, a process that I just explained. But if you want, uh, because I'm sure like, you know, if, if any, any, of, any one of us thinking, of a particular object or a uh, device product, product, it might certainly involve at least one of these elements, hardware, design, whatever, right? So use these things for a better prototyping is what I wanted to convey or portray. I hope this session is more clearer on prototyping. This, I sum up by saying these three are uh, quite really important in, uh, in this session. How effectively are we creating a prototype? That means optimal way of creating a prototype, lean prototyping, better utilization of resources, don't waste much, okay, lean prototyping, iterations. Entirely depends on number of iterations. However, if you may attain a product in a direct way of prototyping, yet don't do it, like take a baby steps. Step one of feature, how do you attain it? You know, all these features and functionalities could be covered in prototype, but then don't do it like, you know, create multiple features in each. That's when you better see things because it's only focused on that particular feature of you. Let's say for example, that urine collection bag, however sound, however it might sound so obvious in uh, urine collection bag is for collecting urine. Like you know, that's very ubiquitous, but then we still recreated mimic that, uh, you know, urine collection you know, is one subject and then create one product for it and the product for feature. So we take a baby steps in iterations. And three, of course, this is the taking adequate insights and ideas you, for every iteration that you're taking until you attain the intended function or feature of a product, all the ID elements. So this is what I wanted to sum up and then say, these are really important in prototyping. Yeah, so we could open for question and answers particular for the session that we just have taken. I'm also stopping the share. Okay, so one of the question asked, like, how do you deal with non-availability of certain materials? Okay, so this is important. This is really crucial in prototyping process. What if your main novelty is just the material itself? If you don't have the resources, particular material, for example, um, in our urine collection bag, 
the material of the plastic it's it's a uh, for prototyping we need to have a biocompatible material for you to really test it until unless you test it with the patient you don't know how effective is the product we are we could make a plastic bag and then see you know and then see get a first hand perspective but then until unless you goes to the user or uh, a first prelim study it cannot put it for test or draw insights from user this is critical um you could simulate or get a nearby or closer uh, you need to explore better in in terms of material exploration also which is more compatible or less compatible for example if uh, if if there is a material that needs to be biocompatible probably you'll explore in 3d printing there is a material called nylon nylon 66 which is biocompatible like close to peak material which is bio uh, biocompatible material peak okay now in advanced uh, tech manufacturing process these are all certain materials which are available already okay you need not go forward and then take the metal uh, stainless steel or the metal which is an implantable material which is accepted universally or implants okay now you need not go to them for you know creating a prototype but then you could either switch to 3d printing of peak material or something of that sort i'm sure there are uh, nearby materials that you could mimic the whole prototype for you need to better prioritize things is the problem with the capital or anything that as such you need to see availability of resources that's the reason i kept one of the parameters as availability to resources is into the prototyping we know that it's a problem of not having a quite adequate resource but you need to and nearby check what availability of resources are there and then try to mimic with them only right we cannot do much about it if the material is not available um, it tends depends on explorations only if there is a capital issue then you need to raise the capital and then do it okay the second example high temperature materials modern advanced wear parts special adhesives special alloys ha huh? i understand so many of the times we also come across this kind of uh, difficulties not accessible materials but as well as biocompatible materials since we were dealing mostly with the medical we that's the very crucial thing that we also Now hit upon for you to quickly prototype. It's not available, but then entirely depends upon explorations and then capital. You infuse more capital and then get try to get uh, materials. For example, if in urine collection by if we have to get some particular material by a compatible material, we have invested a lot in getting the particular material and a bulker quantity. Okay, manufacturer might say you know MOQ is of uh, one ton, one ton of one metric ton of a uh, plastic sheets. <laughs> it's mere waste if uh, you know venturing into that infusing that capital into the one metric ton of a product because it is it's not usable right like that metric ton. what if it fails so until you need to have a really better clarity over the product if you want if you're really sure of the potential problem then you're going to go and infuse that's the reason until so if the accessibility to resources are really less then what you do is you get a clarity of the product how potential is the product and if you can make utilize of the product and commercialize it really soon then you're going to invest and on the on the mid particular material and get it to execute the problem okay okay so one of the interesting question is how do you know when to stop iterating before taking the product to for user testing there are a number of iterations that i was intend i was uh, recommending to perform but then when do you stop it that's the reason one of the slides i've shared you need to attain particular features functionalities id usability there are particular parameters let's say uh, the affordability of the user let's say you could create a beautiful product and if what if the affordability of the patient of the user is quite less and you're going to compromise on that uh, parameter so it all depends upon uh, parameters okay what parameters you want to attain attributes of the product and then give uh, it faster time to market time to market let's say if if you if you competitive product if you have to get in the market for the next 6 months and you want to not invest in uh, reiterating the whole process for multiple times for a refined product that's really important you uh, put a cut to the development and then go to the market faster okay the question says finally in medical and automated parts for regulatory approvals we need to submission of samples that their strength and performance tests also how are these managed as i was talking about this uh, regulatory and approvals prototype 1 prototype 2 these are very internal prototype 1 let's say for example features for it if you attain feature and functionality that's product one first level of integration okay now explorations 
there's something called explorations, right? Explorations are only for internal stakeholders and near, near, when I say stakeholder, user also integrated for quite limited number of audience. Now you're gonna not send this product for approvals or regulatories, right? You better refine the product really well, okay, really well, and then know that it is ready for uh, um, commercialization or a common consensus from all the stakeholders. Then go to the next advanced level of prototyping. It's a pre-production model. There's something called pre-production model. I'm sure Mr. Raja will talk about pre-production model and techniques and methods to do it, okay, in advancement of missionaries and manufacturing. In pre-production model is what, where you infuse more capital in creating a compliable uh, you know, materials are the, which, which are regulatory approvable materials. So that is also one beautiful session that could be talked upon, talked upon, which will come a little later. The whole intention is how fast can you do it? How internally can you, so this is for product design development process, right? Explorations is what really important to enter in a effective prototyping. Now this session is only intended for prototyping for making a better product. After you make a better product, then you go for regulatory approval. So that will be talked about in a little later session. The next session is a uh, color material finish. It's, it's, it's a beautiful session it's gonna be. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how color material finish of a particular, until now we talked about prototyping and reflecting all the functionalities in a particular product. But now we'll talk about how CMF influence uh, the consumer market, color material finish. That's all aesthetic or beautification of a particular product. How it's going to be, effective in commercialization, how does it influence particular behavior of a consumer, CMF user? What attributes you need to infuse in a particular product? That's what we're gonna talk about CMF. And last session, I was, as I was mentioning, pre-production model or the uh, manufacturability will be where we're gonna focus on pre-production only, where it's more for larger volume of uh, consumers. It's not for internal or it's not for, you know, conditioned environment, but it's for others also. That how do you produce or reproduce a particular product? Let's say 10 units prototype is done, 20 units is done. What if you want larger volume of production? That's what you're gonna see in fifth session. These two sessions are left.